Hello my very good viewers, welcome to Ask Dr. Uthman to the channel, a channel where learn medicine at the comfort of your living room. I told you if you'd like to get in touch with me to have a private chat, go to my website www.drufman.com. Uh, book an appointment, I'll be right there to chat with you. You can also follow me on all our social media platforms. The name is Ask Dr. Uthman. And for those of you that would like to join our membership, go to my channel and become a member there are a lot of packs you can choose from but one of the packs you can have a one-on-one -on -one live chat with me so join our membership join our membership you get benefits at different levels and by the way this time around we are always live on youtube facebook and tiktok on thursdays at every five 30 p.m. I mean 17.30 hours East African time. Right away, let's go to the question which was asked by someone. This is Marvarous Mary. She's saying, what if one tube is blocked and one is open? Can I still take vitamin supplements? Now, this lady was asking her question in response. I think she was replying, she was commenting on one of our videos about vitamin supplements or vitamins someone can take in order to conceive fast. Uh, so she asked, what if one tube is blocked and one is open? Can I still take vitamin supplements? So this question is concerning, is talking about whether someone can conceive with one fallopian tube. Uh, another question is from Rukayat Abdul Kadir is saying, thanks a lot, doctor, but what about the one with only one blocked fallopian tube? So all these questions are talking about one blocked fallopian tube. So the question is, is it possible for someone to conceive with only one blocked, I mean with only one open fallopian tube? This is what we are going to learn. Don't go away. Ask Dr. Othman Now, colleagues, for us to understand whether it is possible for someone to conceive with one open fallopian tube, we need these details. And this is what I want to explain. I want everyone to pick this point. I just don't want to say yes or no, but I want you to understand exactly how these things come about. What exactly happens? Now, why are we even bothered? Why am I bothered? Yes, it's a question from my subscriber, but why am I bothered to let you know about these fallopian tubes, talk about fallopian tubes, blockade, and so on? This is the reason. In one of the studies which was made by the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, they concluded that 25 to 35% of female infertility is as a result of blocked tubes, I mean tubal factors. So this becomes a very big problem. It means if we do not have a solution for these tubes, if we don't have a solution to tubal blockade, then 25 to 35% of women will have infertility. So I want you to understand, get a piece of paper, get your pen, be ready and understand this. We need to first understand what fallopian tubes are. What are fallopian tubes? So, fallopian tubes are bilateral conduits. Bilateral conduits. By bilateral, we mean both sides of the pelvic region, of the pelvis. Bilateral conduits, which are located in between the uterus and the ovary. What do I mean? This is what I mean. We have this. I will draw for you this, and most of you just make fun of it but i want you to understand it this time so this is our female reproductive system and it consists of the cervix as usual we have the uterus i need to we need to understand this we have the uterus we have the ovary And then our main factor, the fallopian. Someone asked me, why is it called the fallopian tube? <laughs> so this is the fallopian tube. Of course, you know, I've always told you that for fertilization to occur, 
For fertilization to occur, these things must happen. Number one, because we say this is where our V is. This is the V. Now, you're going to have unprotected sexual intercourse with your spouse. He will drop the sperms here in the V. And when these sperms are dropped here, of course, they will move. They will swim through the cervix, through the uterus, and pass through the fallopian tube. So, now, one of the roles of the fallopian tube during reproduction, all in conception, for someone to conceive, the fallopian tube must be open to allow passage of the sperms. Where are the sperms going? This is where they are going. During ovulation. I know I've never talked about ovulation, signs of ovulation. Check on my videos. Those of you who have never watched uh, those, those videos, check one of my videos about signs of ovulation. Check my video about how uh, you can trace your ovulation. Check my video about how everything, how you can catch it, your ovulation day. Now, during your ovulation, this egg is going to move from the ovary to the fallopian tube. This is the egg at the region, and it will stop at the region called the ampulla. Ampulla. The egg is so weak. When it reaches there, it gets weak, it will stop there. Now what is going to happen? This sperm, which is moving very fast, is going to enter the fallopian tube and reach the region of the ampulla, and then it mixes or fertilizes this ovum, this egg. And once fertilization takes place, we shall form what we call a zygote. I think everyone understands the zygote. Please understand these things because when you don't understand this biology here, this simple science here, you will not understand why someone will not be able to conceive. You will not understand the reason as to why you have fallopian tubes. You will not understand these things very well. Therefore, this is what we mean. A zygote is formed. When a zygote is formed, after 80 days, it is going to be moved. It is going to be moved here in the uterus and it will grow from here. So now one of you, my followers, all, all of you are going to grow from here. Or you grew up from here. Now, we've seen the role of this fallopian tube We've seen the role of this fallopian tube and it is to provide passage of the sperm to reach the egg. Two, it provides a room for fertilization to occur. Why is this fallopian tube prone to many problems? Because we are seeing 25 to 35 percent of, 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 of infertility is as a result of tubal factors. What exactly happens? Now, this fallopian tube you're seeing here anatomically is a small tube. Anatomically, it's a small tube. Its size, it is small. It has a small diameter. By diameter, I mean the, the space in between the tube is small. The diameter is small. Sadly, this tube is thin. The layer is thin. And therefore, because of its, uh, its thinness, number one, number two, its size that is small and a small diameter, it is prone. It becomes a prey for many issues that will lead to blockage, that will lead to adhesions, that will lead to many problems, to many issues that will disturb this fallopian tube. So it is going to cause infertility because we've seen that the main activity, the main issue, the main that brings about pregnancy, fertilization happens in the fallopian tube. So if we have a problem with the fallopian tubes, we shall not be able to conceive. I think this is now very clear to everyone. It is now very clear that if you have tubes that are having a problem, especially when both of them have a problem, how will you conceive? How will you conceive? So now, we need to understand. Let, let us first learn 
what brings about which problems happen to the fallopian tubes what can cause blockade of the fallopian tubes number 1 pid pelvic inflammatory diseases someone call it pelvic inflammatory disorders whatever the case may be but pelvic inflammatory diseases and pids are mainly stds or sexually transmitted because the bacteria the main causative agents of pids are chlamydia sexually transmitted E. coli, of course, E. coli may be sexually transmitted and, uh, and sometimes not sexually transmitted. But most PIDs, most PIDs are sexually transmitted. So that means you can avoid this, my friend. You can avoid this. But, so, when someone gets a PID, when you hear the word PID, pelvic inflammatory, pick out the word inflammatory. So that means this disease is going to cause inflammation of the pelvis by inflammation we, of the pelvis we are meaning specifically inflammation of the fallopian tube inflammation means swelling reddening and fluids and edema so it means this fallopian tube is going to be filled up with water with fluids two this fallopian tube is going to swell three this fallopian tube is going to redden now, when it swells, when it swells, it is going to cause scarring, okay? Especially if this PID is not treated very fast. And actually, the most culprits are chronic PIDs. These acute PIDs may not cause so much problems here. Because if it, it, it happens and then you treat it properly very fast, issues may not come. But chronic PIDs, people who have been with, the, someone has had the PID for a long period of time. All PIDs that are not properly treated, poorly treated, or resistant, they are resistant to many antibiotics. So now, what will happen is that either this tube will heal with scar formation, or all will heal and cause adhesions. All this uh, tube, because it's inflamed, it is a flabby, it is all having fluids, this one can adhere onto this tube and the tube gets closed. The tube gets blocked. And that is PID. Number two, another culprit here. Very, very important. Endometriosis. What do we mean by endometriosis? I want to dissect this clearly to you, my viewers. Endometriosis. I also discussed about uh, endometriosis in one of my videos. But learn that endometriosis is the implantation of the endometrial tissue outside the uterus what we mean this is you see if you look at the uterus if you look at the uterus let's first look at this uterus alone if you look at this uterus this uterus has three layers it has this layer the perimetrium, it has the endometrium, I, I mean the myometrium and the endometrium. This is the outer layer, this is the middle layer, and the innermost layer. The innermost layer is called endometrios, endometrium, and this is myometrium, and this is the perimetrium. Now, this endometrium here, when a woman undergoes menstruation, it means this endometrium has been shed off. It means because during the build up, the build up of, uh, of, of periods when someone is about to go into her periods, there, th this endometrium uh, forms some tissues here. It forms some tissues here. And it is those tissues that are expelled, that are shed off to cause bleeding, and then someone bleeds. Actually, some, what, someone was saying, ah, doctor, you know what happens during menstruation? Uh -huh. The egg comes from the ovary. When it comes from the ovary, it comes, swims, swims, and reaches the fallopian tube. It doesn't find a, a sperm. It goes through, and then, pew, it bursts. It breaks. When the egg ruptures, then there is bleeding. No, the egg doesn't rupture. 
the egg doesn't break. If the egg doesn't find uh, a, a sperm, it will just be dissolved within the body and, that's, and, and it will still go back to your body. It will be dissolved. But what happens is that the endometrium sheds off. There is peeling off of the innermost layer of your uterus. It peels off. When it peels off, you get bleeding. That is a topic of another day. I will teach about menstruation on, in one of my next videos. But what we are talking about is that we have this endometrium, the innermost layer of the uterus. The endometrium, the innermost layer of the uterus. Implanting or moving away or finding that one of the particles of the cells of this innermost layer is, is implanting itself outside the uterus. Outside the body of the uterus. Because you can have endometriosis even at the bladder. One of the uh, cells of the endometrium implanting or growing at the, uh, on the bladder. Rectum, stomach, in the intestines, gut, and so on. But in this case, we are talking about the layer, the innermost layer of the endometrium growing within the fallopian tube. Very absurd. The innermost layer of the, of, of the endometrium, of the body of the uterus, growing into the fallopian tube. What is going to happen? During menstruation, we said the endometrium sheds off and we get bleeding. So what is going to happen here when the endometrium is in the fallopian tube? First of all, we shall not have proper shedding off of this endometrium. Because it is outside the region it's supposed to be. Sometimes they will not even be shedding off. Improper or even no shedding off. So what happens? The endometrium wall is built up and is not shed. It's not being shed. What is going to happen is that it is going to cause inflammation within the tubes. So when there is inflammation, you know what is going to happen? Scars adhesions blockage. That's how endometriosis causes blocked fallopian tubes. Another cause what can bring about blockade of the fallopian tubes is pelvic surgery. Any surgery in the pelvic region, any surgery, whether it was a cesarean section, whether it was a cyst, an ovarian cyst, any pelvic surgery can bring about adhesions, can bring about blockade. Accidentally, accidentally, someone may be doing surgeries in the pelvic region, they accidentally ties the fallopian tube. Even if it's not accidental tying of the fallopian tubes, anything, adhesions, blood can pile up here and cause blockade. Another problem, actually, actually, this is the main factor causing blocked fallopian tube. Uh, number one is PID. Number two, the commonest cause, second commonest cause is ectopic pregnancy. Ectopic pregnancy is also like endometriosis. We said that. When the baby, the zygote is formed from here at the region of the ampule, it has to be moved, propagated, and implants itself in the uterus. The baby grows from the uterus. Now, what happens with uh, an ectopic pregnancy is that instead of the baby coming or implanting itself in the endometrium or in the uterus, the baby will instead implant itself outside. Catastrophe. For example, it can implant itself in the cervix, it can implant itself in the, in, in the stomach. Eh? You know, we've been seeing uh, on, on different media uh, the surgeons getting babies from the liver. The baby growing from the, from the, uh, growing from the liver. The baby growing from the stomach, from the gut, and so on. We've seen those cases. Those are ectopic pregnancies. Now, in this case, this baby is going to grow from all within the 
Ethiopian tube. Catastrophe. Why? The fetus, instead of implanting itself here, where there is a large area, it is implanting itself in the fallopian tube. What did we say about the anatomy of the fallopian tube? Small diameter, thin layer, small diameter, the size is small, and it is a thin layer. Therefore, what is going to happen is that the baby, the fetus, is going to be increasing in size against the size of the against the size of the fetus. And therefore, it will cause rupture of the fallopian tube if it is not worked on early. If this situation is not worked on early, it is going to cause rupture of the fallopian tube. And this is a major gynecological emergency. When there is rupture of the fallopian tube, there is severe bleeding. This is an emergency. There is severe bleeding. And if this case is not worked on very fast, Kaput. So, but of course, in the hospital setting, we have different mechanisms of curbing this. So, this is a, 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 a gynecological emergence when a fetus grows into the fallopian tube and it ruptures. Why is it rupturing? The fetus is growing in size, the tube is small, it is thin. We talked about its diameter and it is not expanding. Therefore, it will rupture. When it ruptures, you know what is going to happen, bleeding. But if the, if, if the case is arrested, if, if, if surgeons do their job very well, and then you get rescued, what is going to happen is that the tube is already destroyed. What they usually do is to anastomose, bring it back, and so on. However, at the end of the day, you can end up with scars, you can end up with adhesions, even the tube itself can go, and this will cause blockade, ectopic pregnancy. Even when it has not ruptured, the, the best treatment for ectopic pregnancy, even when it is not ruptured, is still surgery. So you'll undergo pelvic surgery. That is number one, risk factor for blockade. Number two, sometimes a situation happens whereby you cannot separate this fetus from the fallopian tube and leave the fallopian tube intact. What is going to happen? The surgeon is going to cut. Is going to cut the end, the, 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 the normal end, and the normal end to take away the abnormal end, the abnormal part, which has a fetus. And therefore, you end up with the other problems we talked about. Lastly, concerning the causes of, uh, of, of blocked tubes is tumor ligation. This is, this is voluntary. Someone comes to the hospital, says, doctor, I have produced enough children. I want my tubes to be cut, to be ligated. And we cut out a procedure. It's a simple, it's called a mean laparotomy. We enter inside, get the fallopian tubes, tie them, and cut them. They'll be blocked. So those are the main causes of blocked tubes. Whoever has a blocked tube, know that one of that is the cause. Now, how do we treat? Because if this happens, is it irreversible? No, it is reversible. And the blocked tubes can be treated. How? Hydrosalpingiolysis. Hydrosalpingiolysis. Hydrosalpingiolysis is a procedure. Is, uh, is a procedure that is done to open the fallopian tubes by using fluids. Or you can say by using water. And that's why most women will come and say, Doctor, I want tubal flushing. I want you to, uh, to flush my tubes. That's what they are talking about. What happens is that a speculum, an instrument, is inserted in your V. When it is inserted in your V, your V is opened to visualize the cervix. We get something. Uh, uh, you call it a tube. You fix it there. Ah, when you fix it in the, in the, in the, in the uterus, you power fluids there. Of course, those, it's not, I'm talking about fluids. It's a mixture of some uh, drugs and so on. You power them and open the tube. That is one method. Another method is cannulation. And mainly cannulation is done when the blockade has happened near yeah, the cornea or just near the, near the uterus. When blockade is here at this level, all this level, a cannula may work better. 
Same thing, same process as we did the, 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 the one for fluids. We still use a canna, put tear, and then push and open the fallopian tube. Of course, most times with assistance of uh, an ultrasound or any means of visualization. So, another method of opening this is called fimbrioplasty. And this is a new technique. It's a fimbrioplasty. It's also same. It also works like the tube. But it puts it puts something like a tent open, and then you access uh, the, the the tube. You get the tube opened. So another method is the surgery. It's so doing a surgery laparotomy, opening. When you open, you go and visualize the the the, 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 the uterus, its fallopian tubes, and open them. How you can cut? Of course, you already saw on uh, in the imaging. You know the area where the the fallopian tube was uh, was blocked from. You cut the end that is normal, normal end, and then join, and that is called that is surgery, which can also be done using uh, laparoscopy. You can also be, use laparoscopy if you don't want an open surgery. And then lastly, on the treatment is tubal ligation reversal. People who have done tubal ligation, bilateral tubal ligation, they can come to the hospital. We enter the theater, go back to where the tubes were tied from and cut, and, and then we do a reversal. It's called. Um, Tubo resection and anastomosis. You get one tube that was broke, one end, another end, together, anastomose, and bring back a hole in between the tube. And that is how you can treat. Now, the main question was Is it possible for one with one tube open, another one locked, closed, for that person to conceive? Yes, of course. Very possible because for you to conceive, you need only one tube. Even with with someone who has both tubes open, patent tubes, they only need one tube. It's one side actually. During menstruation, during that process, all ovulation, an egg comes from one side of the ovary of of, of the of, of the uterus. It is one ovary that releases, releases the egg. And if two ovaries actually release eggs, that is how people end up with. It. Platano twins. Therefore, you only need one side. If one side is blocked, another one is open, you will be able to conceive, except if you have some other problems. Like maybe even that tube you're talking about also is inflamed, is all, all, it's also partially blocked. Or maybe you have a problem with your hormones. Some people have. Uh, they have, you have one tube that is blocked, another one is open, but you also have hormonal problems. If it's your very first time to watch my video, please don't forget to subscribe and also press the notification bell in order to be notified of any videos we upload. And for those of you who would like to have a private chat, a private conversation, go to my website www.drusman.com book an appointment i'll be there to chat with you privately and for those of you who are willing to become members we've designed several packs for you and in one of those packs there is a way you can have a one and a one-on-one -on -one live chat with me to solve your problem follow us on all our social media platforms the name is ask dr uthman always on a thursday at 5.30 or 17.30 hours East African time, we are always live and people ask their questions live and we answer. Sign out. Ask Dr. Othman.